the song is probably familiar to you. It's called The Entertainer and it was composed by the American musician Scott Joplin in around 1902. It's a ragtime, which is a, was a very popular rhythm in the United States at the turn of 19th to 20th century. The book The Red Rooster Scare, Making C Cinema American, 1900-1910, written by Richard Abel. It's a very interesting book about early cinema, and uh, it starts right uh, prior to the beginning of the Nickelodeon period in the United States. So the book starts in around 1902. Um, back then, the films of the French company um, Pate Frehe, whose symbol was a red rooster, Therefore, the book is named The Red Rooster Scare. They were very popular in the United States, even more popular than films made by American studios. At this time, the Nickelodeons uh, weren't popular yet. They would start to be popular in around 1905. And uh, at this time... Among the main American studios, there were the Vitagraph Studios and the Biograph Studios, which was famous for being the studio where the W. Griffith has started. But back then, the W. Griffith didn't work in, in the Biograph Studios yet. He would start only in 1908. And uh, Biograph Studios... and Edison Studios. All of those studios were located in New York, and Hollywood Studios would come a little bit later, around the 1910s. So, Richard Abel has a thesis that in the very beginning of the 20th century, until around 1907, 1908, the most popular films in the United States were not produced by American studios, but they were produced by the French studios Pate Frehe. There were some reasons for that. In the very beginning of the 20th century, the output of the American studios weren't very high. At first, it was okay. But then, in around 1905, it started the era of Nickelodeons, which were very cheap places devoted to the exhibition of films. Because prior to the Nickelodeons, the films they were shown in a wide range of places. For example, they could be shown in vaudeville houses as part of the all other attractions of the evening, for example, singing, dancing, but uh, not necessarily. There were houses, places, establishments specialized in exhibiting films only. It has started to be more popular to only show films back to the Nickelodeon eras. And they were very cheap cinemas, they were attended by the working class and, uh, and at first they were attended by men but after a while the Nickelodeons would be attended by women and children. Um, a plenty of audience members were immigrants especially Jewish immigrants, immigrants from Southern Europe, from Italy, and so on. And they represented very good spaces so they could integrate to the American life because the films were silent and they could understand the films easily and it wasn't required to speak English fluently. And the Pate Frehe films, they were abundant because back in France, where the films were produced, 
the this studio they had a, a very big space to produce those films and uh, they could have a high output much higher output than the american studios at first and they had a very interesting way of producing films some films were hand colored and the plot of those films were very interesting some of them were about fairy tales others were about uh, what would be called nowadays actualities actualities would be uh, like a newspaper shown on a screen they showed the actual the current events of the day in the similar way that would be shown in a newspaper so they showed historical events uh, coronation of kings wars and cr judgment of criminals and this kind of things that were in vogue back then and those plots they were popular they could be understood by audiences from all sorts of cultural backgrounds and the coloring techniques were very beautiful and they were appreciated by american audiences and richard abel the, he provides an extensive research uh, mentioning which film which particular films were shown in specific cinemas it was a very deep uh, research but then after a while the nickelodeons started to cause some kind of preoccupation in american society because they were dark places not necessarily clean and all sorts of people would mingle there for example women without their husbands children without their parents and in big cities especially in big cities a plenty of those nickelodeons were located close to shopping districts which means that uh, it was very nice and convenient to watch some films they could last uh, 15 30 minutes one hour at most while they were resting from their shopping sessions of the day and uh, there were some it has started to exist some censorship commissions on local um, state and federal level they were formed by people who were concerned about the morals not only the morals of the plots of the films but the morals of people who attended those cinemas the concept of the cinema was still really new and there was some kind of preoccupations and those committees both governmental and non-governmental started to analyze the films the hygiene of the venues the kind of people who attended and slowly but surely there was some kind of concern about those foreign films about the plot uh, if they would portray the american values properly and the pate frere studios realized that and uh, at first they had a sales office in the beginning in new york then in other cities after a while they assembled some studios in the united states to produce films that would be more according to the american culture and values for example westerns and comedies about uh, american actualities and they really tried to tailor their films to american audiences but then um, the american studios started to develop more and produce more films and then it would be preferred both by the audiences 
and those kind of censorship committees, films that were pro locally produced because they could reproduce better those so-called American values and cultures. So in this transition period, those foreign films called a kind of a scare, this is why the title of the book is The Red Rooster Scare, and uh, it was preferred to adopt uh, films made by American studios. And uh, the studios could cater to the audience tastes, and they got to produce the proper amount of films because Nickelodeon's required lots of films because films could last 15, 30 minutes, sometimes even less than that. And they were exchanged almost daily. So there was a requirement of new films almost on a daily basis. So when American studios could... Uh, provide films in this fast speed, they were preferred, and the films produced by Pate Frehe and foreign studios were no longer that popular as they have once been between 1900 and around 1907, 1908. And uh, it was a way to nationalize the new media, to adjust to the taste of the audiences, and to provide plots that would tailor to the moral code of the society, the moral code of churches, the moral code of local associations, the moral code of the audience. And then there was um, surveillance of the places so they could have proper hygiene. Children without parents were no longer allowed to attend the cinema sessions. And it was no longer encouraged the attendance by unaccompanied women. So it was a very brief period and uh, not everybody is aware of that, that in the very beginning of the cinema, prior to the Nickelodeon advent, and already in, also in the beginning of the Nickelodeon era, those French films were immensely popular, even more popular than American films themselves. This is Richard Abel's thesis. He provides research. He provides uh, newspaper quotes. He provides archive quotes, uh, reinforcing his thesis that uh, at, very, at the very beginning, American films were not the most popular in the American soil. And also the fact that is known, that is more known, that Nickelodeon's provided a very interesting, entertaining space. And it wasn't only the advent of the cinema that was new. The way that middle and poor classes uh, had fun, the, the way they entertained themselves, were changed in a broader range. For example, there was the advent of the amusement park, which was also a new institution. There were the shopping districts and the big department stores, for example, Sears, and their famous catalogs. And uh, all those kinds of entertainment venues out of home where families could congregate, where people could mingle, could gather together, and, for example, play at restaurants and snack bars. So it was a very interesting era when the urbanization had started to cause an impact in society. The so-called bright lights of the big city have started to happen, 
back then the automobile the cars have started to be more widespread still not wow extremely common but cars have started being sold especially due to the cereal production by Henry Ford in, in his factories So many new commodities have started to be created and among those commodities, entertainment as a commodity in the sense that there was a product that was supposed to be consumed by the masses. It was also the beginning of the so-called mass culture. So Richard Abel also mentions in his book that It was created because it often happens with capitalism. It's created a new commodity, and then you have to advertise that commodity and show to people that they need that. It's the so-called artificially created necessity. And then that specific commodity fall. Uh, that specific commodity is within the taste of the audiences. The masses started to consume it, and then it's created a necessity, an artificial necessity, but it's something that the masses think, oh, I need to have that, this will be nice for me, this will entertain me, this is how I'm going to have fun. So, the Red Rooster's Care, Making Cinema American, 1900-1910. It's a very interesting book about early cinema. Richard Abel is a known author in the silent film field. His research is very interesting. There are some pictures in the films, especially from newspapers, reportages, many interesting mentions of uh, early films. A plenty of them are available online or in DVD. So, for everyone who would like to know more about silent films, this is a very interesting reading, especially because when people study and watch silent films, they don't focus too much on early cinema. They tend to focus on 1910s and 1920s films made in Hollywood. But films have started to be made already in the end of the 19th century. And the way of producing films was very different. At first, in the United States, the venue of cinema studios... The city where most films were produced was New York, not Hollywood. Only on early 1910s, films have started to be produced in Hollywood. So there's lots of history prior to the 1910s. And not always people focus on that. This is why readings and films from before the 1910s are so important for those who want to know better the history of cinema.